show your support. Like, share and subscribe. that British guy and welcome to my first ever playthrough on my channel. Now I was going to start this last week with a playthrough of Zelda on my GameCube because I have the collection with all of the games up until The Wind Waker but it didn't prove to be very good because as I hadn't played the game before I died a lot. A lot. So I didn't go with that because it wasn't going to be very good footage and I then decided to jump to the second Zelda game and I died a lot in that as well so I basically scrapped that idea and then had to kind of root out a different game that is sort of old enough to qualify. I basically want to do anything that's really pre PlayStation 2 if possible. PlayStation 1 being the absolute newest of games. If I can get my hands on things a lot older than that then I will. Um, but certainly don't want to be going any newer than really the year 2000 is sort of my arbitrary cutoff point. So because of that what I have done is I have picked Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake and you will notice I am playing this on a PlayStation 2. However, I don't own an MSX and don't have the original version of the game because virtually no one alive now does. So I am playing this on my PlayStation 2 and I'm actually playing it on my Metal Gear Solid 3 subsistence disc. But the game was originally released in 1990, so that is retro enough for me. So I'm just deciding to go with it. So without further ado, let's get started. Here we go. Now, just to give everyone a bit of an overview um, as to my history with this, I have played this game a couple of times. I've completed it, uh, yeah, two, three times, I think. So I sort of know what I'm doing with it, so it shouldn't be a complete car crash, hopefully. In terms of the sort of storyline before this, uh, the first game is very, very basic. Um, sort of just Solid Snake going in and beating some bosses, throwing some hostages and finding out that at the end his CO, Big Boss, was actually the main enemy. Anyone that knows anything about this franchise is probably well aware of Big Boss's story and his history and everything. Um, anyone that is completely new to this and hasn't played or seen any of the games or knows anything about the characters, I don't really want to go into detail any more than this. Um, purely because I don't want to spoil it for them, so if you do want to make any comments any suggestions like that in the videos please keep them spoiler free uh, just just really to do a favor to those guys that are unaware of the story of the game don't want to spoil it for them um, I will just delete the comments as and when I can uh, whenever I see them so really do yourself and everyone a favor and just Please don't, basically. So in terms of the backstory, yeah, that's that's really all I, I want to say so far. Just let the uh, rest of these credits play out in their funky late 80s, early 90s 8-bit style. And this was the game where Kojima was really able to do a bit more storytelling. There's a lot more dialogue, there's a lot more character backstory in this second game. As I say, the first game was very, very two-dimensional really, for want of a better term. 
and the characters were very basic. But they're given a bit more depth in this second game, especially the return characters. There we have our Metal Gear. It is the late 1990s. The world is embarking on an age of peace and stability. 1999 to be precise. Relations between the Cold War superpowers have thawed. Regional conflicts are being resolved. The threat of nuclear war is now a thing of the past. Yes, in the history of this game, the Cold War didn't end in the early 90s, because obviously this was written in 1990, so it still exists. But there are some who not, do not desire peace. An atmosphere of tension begins to build in the Middle East. Shock, given the situation at the time. A military junta comes to power in Zanzibar land, a small nation bordering on the USSR, China and the Middle East. Zanzibar land attacks nuclear weapons disposal sites around the world, seizing those weapons that are still intact and becomes the world's only nuclear power. It then begins to invade its neighbours at will. After announcing nukes forever, the world is once again threatened by the spectre of nuclear war. And anyone that isn't aware, there's a very, very heavy sort of nuclear warfare angle with all of the Metal Gear games. Meanwhile, the world's oil supply, which was to last another 30 years, suddenly and unexpectedly dries up. Without a safe alternative source of energy, the world faces a severe energy crisis. It is in these dire circumstances that Dr. Keo Marg, a Czech biologist, develops Oilix, a microbe that can synthesise high-grade petroleum. With this discovery, global tensions are once again on the rise. On his way to attend an American scientific conference, Dr. Marv is kidnapped by agents of Zanzibar. With its nuclear weapons and the secret of Oilix, Zanzibar land plans to achieve global military domination. A tiny microbe, only a few microns wide, is about to change the world forever. Apologies in advance for the voices. This is Snake. I've reached the infiltration point. Snake, right on time as always. Let's get started. Commencing Operation Intrude F014. Let's go over this one more time. Your mission is to infiltrate Zanzibar rescue the kidnapped Czech biologist Dr. Keo Marv. Snake, we've provided you with a new anti-personnel sensor. Try switching it on. Roger, it's on. The white dots on your radar are enemy soldiers. The red dot is your current position. The radar is equipped with several other types of sensors as well. They should warn you of any unseen dangers. What's the radar's effective range? Take a look at your radar display. It shows a nine screen area centered on your position. However, it may not work in small, enclosed spaces. 
Also, if the enemy spots you, you won't be able to use the radar. The enemy will use a jammer to scramble it. Got it. Where can I find Dr. Marv? Well, Dr. Marv has a transmitter implanted in one of his molar teeth. When you get close to him, he'll show up as a red dot on your radar. So I just have to keep an eye out for the red dot. Snake, use frequency 140.85 for all future communications with me. Good luck. Over and out. Right. Here we go. Got absolutely nothing apart from maybe some cigarettes. Some guys above me. to come back down here. Go away! You'll see me otherwise. For anyone that can't see what I'm doing, I'm looking at my radar to check the position of these guys. Right. Crawling to sneak through gaps in the fence. Over and out. Didn't mean to do that. Fight when you have to fight. Kill when you have to kill. Those are the rules on the battlefield. In a shooting game, over and out. It is not a real shooting game, is it? Because you have no gun at the moment. And most of my enemies can easily outgun me. Someone familiar with this game it's very much stealth rather than a firefight because otherwise you find yourself outgunned very very quickly especially at these early stages of the game and you just stand absolutely no chance of winning you just get killed very very easily go away guy Even when I have a gun, the enemy will be able to hear me quite a lot and will then probably all sort of gang up on me. You can't sneak in through the front door. Use the vents over and out. I'm 
not too long that day. In we go. Yeah, see now I'm in a tight space. My radar is useless. Go back again, shall we? Don't let, let me pick up more. <laughs> it was worth a try. Now, this game, for anyone that's played Metal Gear Solid but hasn't played this, will probably start to notice a lot of similarities, especially as the game progresses. It was kind of used as the model for the Metal Gear Solid game. I'm Holly, Holly White. I infiltrated Zanzibar land a month ago, posing as a journalist. So I know pretty much how things work around here. I'll help you any way I can. My frequency is 140.15. Call me later. Snake, come in. Remember, you won't always be able to procure supplies and plan accordingly. Don't run out. To the screen at the exact tile that you walked on at. So as long as you move across by one, not only will they not be able to see you, but you can also pick them off one by one. Kind of cheating. Unlike in newer games, they do not penalise you for how many times you get caught, which is quite lucky for me because I tend to get caught quite a few times, even though I have played this a few times. Let's leave up. No! Stupid controller. Right, 
right, let's try that again, shall we? Oh, you are joking! Notice that we walk sideways further. a lot of guys about now. And the reason I'm crawling on this floor is because it makes a noise when you walk on it, just to make things a little bit trickier. Not too bad now, we can hear that. Guards can hear that too. So even at this early stage, putting in sound cues as well as visual ones. Damn it. There's me saying that. close. Come on! Come on! You know you want to get punched. Alright, run away then. Chicken!
do with more rations would be good. the betting after all this I'm not going to be able to get through that door. Come on! I forget how good their eyesight is on there. forget that they don't just see in straight lines, they've got a certain amount, at least, of peripheral vision. Oh, I can't get in there, good. Okay, so that is the basement covered, because I can't go through that door. And obviously I can't use that other lift, because it's broken. Job I checked then. Oh, that's what I need a gas mask for. Uh, right. I think, if memory serves, I can't get the gas mask yet. I can see a red dot here. Aha! Here we go, we're here! isn't here. Figures that Foxhound would use such a cheap transmitter. You guys are really behind the times. Okie dokie. Black Ninja. I am Black Ninja, former member of NASA's Extraterrestrial Environment Special Forces Unit. Now, let's see just how strong the world's most advanced Black Ops unit really is. Show me what you've got, Foxhound. Okie dokie, it's boss time! Wow. Let's have the ration because I'm probably going to need one. Ah, not good. 
For red goggles. Damn it, this my chance. Beam. Aha, gas mask, good. At least this time when I go through I won't have to choke to death. Perfect. health than I had before now. But is the hand I've been dealt. Got my gas mask on.
Yes! Now, you will notice that there will be a couple of items missing from when I played through, namely the gas mask, because I died a couple of extra times and I basically cut that out just to uh, skip the repetition, basically. Snake! Who are you? How do you know my name? It's me, Schneider, Kyle Schneider. Remember me? Kyle Schneider was one of your support guys from the first game, just to put that into context. Schneider, you were in the resistance and out of heaven. But I thought they killed you. The whole base blew up at the end of the last game and he was still inside. You still got a lot to learn, Snake. I was almost killed, but not by them. By you and your country. What are you saying, Schneider? Snake, after you destroyed Metal Gear, NATO launched a massive bombing campaign against Outer Heaven. All of us resistance fighters and the children of Outer Heaven, they didn't care about any of us. There was no escape from the flames. They died like animals in a cage. I can't believe this. Think about it. The children of Outer Heaven were originally war orphans and refugees from all over the world. They were a liability and NATO didn't want to deal with them. No. You're no different. They'll forget about you too. He wasn't like them. Who? He came and saved us from annihilation. He forgave us for what we'd done. He gave us a new land to call home. A new family. He did? You mean? Snake, you'll understand soon. What a wonderful man he is. Snake, I owe you a debt. There's no hate between us. I'll tell you where Dr. Marv is. It's what he would want me to do. Find the man who's guarding the cell where Dr. Marv is being held. Follow that man and he should lead you straight to the cell. You can tell him by his green beret. He should be on the first floor. Got that? A green beret. Follow the man in the green beret. I think we're following a man in a green beret. Just putting that out there. So, there we go. That is our first boss defeated and I think a very good place to end this playthrough. Please let me know what you think about it so far and how I'm doing. If you've not played the game before, what are your thoughts on it? As I said before, please try and keep all the comments spoiler free just for anyone who hasn't played through the game. You're not going to spoil anything for me because I've played this and every other Metal Gear game so jokes on you really because I will just delete those comments so please don't bother doing it. Um, but other than that, I will be back very soon with a second playthrough of Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. But until then, I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.